Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth travelers. Oblix here, and today I want to talk to you about the Elliot Havoc Oxford. So, this was a Watch Gang subscription watch. Uh, I did not receive this as a subscription. I actually bought this from another member through the Watch Gang Exchange because, honestly, I love the name Havoc. That just seems so cool. So, and the watch looks pretty cool too. So, uh, I, I just, I had to. I, I believe this was a basic subscription. I, I'm almost positive it was um, several months ago. Uh, the basic basic subscription, if you remember, is twenty nine dollars and guarantees a watch between fifty and a hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so let's take a look now. This case is pretty darn cool. It's it's fairly hard. It's a slide box, so you got a, a slide on the inside, and it is branded all the way around. You've got the nice uh, Elliot Havoc logo there on the front. And I guess it's not all the way around, doesn't have anything on that side, but it does say Elliot Havoc over here. It is branded on the back, and it is branded on the bottom with a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. There you go. Read that if you wish. So let's take a look at this Havoc. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Star Trek reference, check. Actually, it came from somewhere else, but we're going to put it as a Star Trek reference because that's where I remember it from as a kid. And, wow, there we go. The Elliot Havoc Oxford. I say that weird, don't I? Um, nice presentation, Elliot Havoc. You did a decent job here. Um, you know, for an inexpensive watch, this is not a bad presentation at all. Uh, liking the case, liking the box. Uh, let's pull the watch out so you guys can get a better look at it. And you will see. Uh, I guess what. I liked about it, but beyond the name, I mean, the name is just cool, let's be honest, uh, was this starburst pattern, I think I believe they call it a starburst pattern here, in the face. Uh, it is a silver face, and it's got this nice starburst pattern that really comes out well in person. I don't know if it's going to translate into the camera well. I'm trying to move the watch around just a little bit so you guys can see it kind of move, but also keep it out of the bright light. Uh, challenging, but uh, yeah, it, it it comes out beautiful in person. Uh, it does have a date complication. Uh, these this time is actually right, so you can't quite see the date because it is actually changing days because it is almost midnight where I live. Well, it's eleven o'clock where I live. Um, so second hand, hour hand, minute, uh, no luminescence on this, so no loom shot, guys. Sorry. Um, it does have, according to Elliot Havoc, a genuine leather band, which and eh, the quality's a little suspect, I'm gonna say. Look how this is uh you know, when you look how that's wrinkling up there. Um you know, you bend it back this way it looks okay, which is the way you would normally wear it. But it starts flexing this way at all and you get those nasty wrinkles which are going to end up cracking the leather and make it look not very nice. So, um, yeah, I don't know about that. A little, little bit suspect. A little bit suspect. Um, this kind of twill pattern or cloth on the back is pretty cool. I actually like that. When you look at it from the side and from the top, it almost looks like the leather's frayed and damaged, which you know I kind of like. It gives it some character. Um, you know, so somebody walking up to you is going to think it's frayed and damaged, like, yeah, man, your watch is kind of shoddy. Well, you look over, and it's not. It's the way it's supposed to look. Uh, they did stitch in a um, leather patch here for to cover the holes so that it doesn't stretch them out. Uh, we got a double keeper. Uh, one of them, the f first one is captive. The second one, of course, is free. Uh, as actually, this one's these are fairly thick. Uh, these are thicker than a lot more expensive watches, actually. 
Um, they're really rigid though. Actually, the leather, is, you know, the whole band is, is very rigid, very, very rigid. Uh, it's like a thin piece of leather with some squishy stuff in the middle and then this fabric on the outside, and it, it just makes the whole thing pretty darn stiff. Uh, no branding on the buckle, and no branding on the crown. Of course, this is a more inexpensive watch, so uh, we can we can let that slide. Same with this leather. I mean, it's going to wear out pretty soon, but it is a replaceable band, and you know it's a pretty inexpensive watch. I believe these retail right now uh, on the Elliott Havoc website for $80. Uh, of course, anybody who pays retail is a goofball and should never be allowed to procreate. So don't pay retail for a watch. That's the sort of it. Or don't pay MSRP. I, I believe I got this guy for around $50, if I remember right. Uh, it might have even been less than that. Maybe been $40. it has been a while. Um, I will tell you, this guy is super light. He is absolutely going to be a featherweight. Um, which is good. If you prefer a lighter watch, then... Yeah, yeah, one and a half ounces? Come on, guys. Uh, that is no weight at all. So, um, size-wise, he's not huge. I always put this in the wrong hand. Every, I'm going to have to start putting it on the side of the table because maybe that will help me remember. Uh, popping this on here, and we're looking at about 39. I believe Elliot marks it uh, on their website. They mark it as a 40, and that's probably just where you grab it. Yeah, there's a 40 right there. So, uh, very thin as well. So, if we get this down in there like so, uh, we're looking at a, what is that, 7.9? Call it 8. Uh, so, not a big watch at all and super super light uh replaceable bands yes and we're looking at roughly a 19 say 20. Uh, it's going to be a 20 band so there is a that um on the wrist, wrist currently i've got the heritor which is our black subscription from the watch gang uh black tier subscription that is came in for June, so only had this just a little bit of time and given it some wrist time so we can uh, get a good review on it. Haven't done the review yet. It will be coming up soon. Let's pop that guy off. Isn't he gorgeous, though? Nice. Nice. Not a bad first watch from the watch gang, i got to say. Uh, we'll set that aside, and we'll get the Havoc on the wrist so you guys can take a look at it. Um, again, it's a smaller watch. You know, very thin, very minimalist uh, in appearance. Not bad at all on the wrist. Let me pop it on the correct way so you can see where that crown is going to fall. And again, I don't like that uh, that leather wrinkling out like that. that. That bugs me a lot. But I'm, you know, anal retentive about things like that. But again, we've got to remember that the price point on this guy, uh, you know, being very low, um, you're not going to get. You know, the quality that you would expect from, like, this Heritor here. You know, this has got a fantastic band, but come on, guys. This is a $400 watch. You know, the price you would pay. You know, it's retail $600 watch. So, you know, what do you expect? This is an $80 watch. You know, it's not going to be the same. We have to... we got to take things with a grain of salt, okay? Um, for what you're paying, man, this guy does look good. I mean, he looks good on the wrist. Uh, now, there is no luminescence, so this is not going to be a nighttime wear. This is a daytime-only watch, guys. Um, this is a, a wear-it-to-work. You know, if you work in an office space, uh, you weren't work in a construction yard, probably not. Uh, but if you're working in an office space, absolutely a good choice for around the office. Um, fits very well. You know, not huge on the wrist. Remember, I do have a little bit larger wrist. Six feet tall with a, around a seven wrist. And uh, it fills it up fairly well, but not completely. Uh, it's not dwarfing my wrist by any means, nor is it getting lost in it. Um, so a pretty good size. And I, again, I do love that starburst in there. Um, it just, you get a different colorations as you twist the wrist a little bit. You know, it's not really even colorations. It's um, brightness. So there will be a, 
you know, the way I'm seeing it now, and it's probably different from the way you're seeing it because it depends on the angle of approach, but I'm seeing kind of a dark patch here and a dark patch here with some bright patches over here and here. And I believe from the camera, I can tell you're seeing a bright patch here and a bright patch here and dark patches on the side. So we're exactly opposite, given that I'm on the other side of the table from you. That makes sense. Um, nice red accents at the 12 hour and uh, on the second hand. The you know, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, and 11 are slightly raised off of the face. Um, just just ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but they're you know they're raised up just just a tad. Um, so to give it a little bit more character, so it's not quite as plain. Let's pop this off so you guys I can maybe hold it up the right way for you. And you can see it a little better. Um, try to center that for you here. And again, the date complication is a little bit small, but easy, you know, it is easily readable. And you do have the 24-hour time increments defined in there as well. So for what you're going to pay for this, guys, uh, it is worth it. It is a good watch. You know, I have enjoyed wearing it. I will continue to wear it. It's going to stay in my collection for a while. Uh, it's a good throw-on when I want a little bit nicer watch, when I want something a little bit lighter. Um, if, you know, I know I'm not going to be out at nighttime and I know I'm going to be, you know, walking around the office, things like that, it, it's a great choice. Um, if I'm dressing up a little bit, it's also a good choice. Uh, if I don't want to wear one of my more expensive watches. Um, but absolutely, I would recommend it. Is it going to go in the Hall of Fame? Mm, no, I don't think it is. Uh, remember the Hall of Fame are watches that I would buy again if something happened to this one. Would I buy it again? Uh, another way to look at Hall of Fame, I don't think I mentioned before, is is it on the chopping block to be sold? Um, you know, Would I sell it if somebody said, hey, I'll give you X number of dollars for it that you know I found reasonable? Um, you know, would I sell this? Yes. Would I replace it if it were lost or damaged? Probably not. I've had my fun with it. You know, I've enjoyed my time with it. It did put a smile on my face. It still puts a smile on my face. Pulling it out for this review, I'm, I'm grinning from ear to ear. Uh, you know, I do like the watch. I just wouldn't be bothered to replace it, you know, in the event something happened to it. You know, I, I, I don't get that much enjoyment out of it, but I don't want to take away from the fact that I do enjoy the watch and I do like the watch. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, I encourage you to check them out. Uh, they're you know a micro brand. They're they're coming up. They're starting to release quite a few new new styles. Um, you know again this is the Oxford. You know just one of their styles and what a cool name. I mean Havoc. That's just an awesome name for a watch. I, I don't know why that appeals to me so much. It just does. But here we go, the Elliott Havoc Oxford. So, I sure do appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me, taking a look at this here watch. And until next time, you guys get out there and make some noise. See ya.